Welcome to another lesson on spiritual gifts. In this lesson, we'll be discussing the gift of knowledge. Now, the gift of knowledge may be defined as the God-given ability to understand, summarize, and explain biblical truth for the benefit of believers. Now, the word translated knowledge is the word gnosis, which is where we get our words Gnostic and Gnosticism. It simply means to know. Now, the phrase utterance of knowledge refers to a word of divine or biblical knowledge. This gift is clearly related to the gift of teaching and preaching. Knowledge is the gift of understanding God's word. Teaching involves the gift of effectively sharing that knowledge. Now, before the completion of the New Testament, the utterance of knowledge was apparently done through direct divine revelation. Now, this was certainly true in the life of the Apostle Paul. Look at what he writes about the gospel that he preached. Go to Galatians chapter one, verse 12. It says, for I did not receive it from a human source and I was not taught it, but it came by a revelation of Jesus Christ. However, with the completion of the New Testament, God's entire revelation to us is now contained in his written word. All the knowledge that God wants us to have concerning his way and his will is in the Bible. Therefore, he doesn't want anyone adding to it or taking away from what his written word already says. God's truth is complete and unchanging. And that's why Jude makes this appeal in Jude, the third verse. He says, dear friends, although I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once for all. You see, my brothers and sisters, God's word is fixed forever. The content of God's word is once and for all and cannot be added or changed. Now, as with all gifts, our ultimate model is Jesus Christ. When Jesus is 12 years old, his parents take him to this big feast called the Feast of the Passover that took place in Jerusalem. After the celebration, they start to return home back to Nazareth. They assumed that Jesus was with the other travelers and they didn't miss him at first. However, when he doesn't show up that evening, <laughs> they start to get worried. They start looking for him. And when they can't find him, they go back to Jerusalem to search for him. Three days later, sound familiar? They find him in the temple, sitting with the Jewish rabbis, listening to them and asking questions. But look at what else the scriptures record. Luke chapter two, verse 47. And all those who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Believers with the gift of knowledge love to research and study the Bible. They are not satisfied with a shallow knowledge of the word of God. They would prefer to spend hours, days, weeks, months, even years searching and discovering deep biblical truths. This gift is found in biblical scholars and in expository teachers and preachers of God's word. Possessors of the spiritual gift can be potential drawbacks in the church though. See, when they are selected to teach a Bible study, their teaching is sometimes so deep and so complicated that they are very difficult to understand and boring. 
Persons with this gift are often weak on application, being more interested in studying Bible languages, biblical history and techniques rather than sharing its truths in a practical way. They often focus only on learning rather than doing. Again, the gift of knowledge may be defined as the God-given ability to understand, to summarize, and explain biblical truth for the benefit of believers. Now, as I already mentioned, the absence of a particular gift in a believer's life is no excuse for ignoring the commands in that area. Every believer is to obey this command that Peter admonishes us to. Second Peter chapter three, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and the day of eternity. Though we have all biblical knowledge, if we have not love, we are nothing. And as with all spiritual gifts, this one must function within the context of love. The gift of, no of knowledge overlaps with love. So for believers in a church to be knowledgeable about God's word and properly apply it to their lives, it requires the assistance of other believers with the gift of knowledge. I pray this was a blessing to you.